Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe. It is the morning after the Torture Poets Department anthology was released last night. Yeah, that's right. We got a double album. We got the Torture Poets Department at midnight Eastern time, like we expected. And then at 2 a.m., we've been talking about the twos, all the twos being thrown up at 2 a.m. Taylor revealed that, surprise, it's actually a double album, The Torture Poets Department, the anthology, with 15 extra songs, 15 more songs for us to break down, for us to listen to, for us to digest. This woman is just the gift that keeps on giving. I I still can't believe we have over 30 songs from this album. It is actually insane. You guys at this point have heard, have watched my reaction video to the, I guess, first album in the Torture Poets Department, the original 16 songs. I am going to do a breakdown of the additional 15 songs, the anthology series. I don't know what exactly we want to call those extra 15 songs. Um, I guess the anthology. I'm going to do a full breakdown next week once I've actually had time to like listen to the songs. Because let's be honest, 30 plus songs is a lot to get through, a lot to form opinions about, understand lyrics, digest it all. So I need some time to fully process before I can give my comprehensive thoughts and opinions on those songs. So stay tuned for that. We're going to have a lot of content next week. Again, once I've been able to listen to the album, process the album, we're going to break it down in so many different ways. We're going to we're going to be talking about this album for the foreseeable future. So fear not, but but I did still want to dive in to a couple of aspects, highlights of the album of the extra songs that we got, specifically the songs that pertain to one Mr. Travis Kelsey and one Miss Kim Kardashian. We're going to, again, probably next week, I'm going to get into the songs that are about Joe Alwyn, the songs that maybe are about Matt Healy. Like we're going to get into all of that next week, but I did just want to highlight because obviously the album itself, it's about those two relationships, Joe and Matt. Like that's, that's, the majority of the album. That's the majority of this, of, of the material that, that she was pulling from. But we do get a little bit of Travis and we do get a little bit of Kim Kardashian. So I wanted to touch on those in this video today. The first song being, I know, well, we'll get to the alchemy, which I do think has Travis Kelsey references, but the only really true Travis Kelsey song we got on the album came in the 2 a.m. version of the songs, in the anthology songs, and that is So High School. I was freaking out listening to this song because all of the little references, I just, we have to break down the lyrics because it's too good. It's too perfect, honestly. Like, (laughs) she nailed some of the, like, references and things that she has in this song. I was like, oh my gosh, wow, this girl, (laughs) she sees everything. Okay, so... One of the lines of the song is, tell me about the first time you saw me, I'll drink what you think and I'm high. So tell me about the first time you saw me, obviously referencing Travis Kelsey going to her concert in Kansas City, seeing her perform, and then obviously then, you know, going on the podcast. We we know what happens next, but she obviously, you know, that that's a direct reference to the fact that Travis first saw her in a concert. Okay, this part made me actually laugh out loud. I'm watching American Pie with you on a Saturday night. Your friends are around, so be quiet. I'm trying to stifle my sighs because I feel so high school every time I look at you. Watching American Pie, that <laughs> that is the most Travis Kelsey reference I think I've ever seen ever. I'm surprised, honestly, that it's because I I know that Travis is a big Chris Farley fan. I know he's a big Adam Sandler fan. So I'm kind of surprised it, it wasn't a movie like Tommy Boy or Happy Gilmore or something. But American Pie, clearly, clearly Travis. And I'm just picturing like Travis and his friends sitting on the couch watching American Pie and Taylor Swift is just like hanging out there with her bros. Like that is, as she says, that is so high school. <laughs> That is so high school. Hanging out with the boy you're dating 
with all of his friends watching like a comedy or something. Hilarious. Okay. Then she says, are you going to marry, kiss, or kill me? That is a reference to a video clip that has gone viral over the last, well, really since Travis and Taylor dated from when Travis was doing his promo for his reality show, Catching Kelsey. Some journalist, I can't even remember who it was, asked him if he would, he, he had to kiss, marry, kill. And the, the three celebrities, I believe, were Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, and Katy Perry. I think it was Ariana Grande. It was definitely Taylor and Katy Perry. And in the video, Travis picked, chose to kiss Taylor Swift. So that line, direct reference to that video, hilarious. Um, okay, then she goes on. It's just a game, but really, I'm betting on all three for us too. Get my car door, isn't that sweet? Then pull me to the back seat. No one's ever had me. Like, not not like you. Okay, so obviously the reference to get my car door, isn't that sweet, is to like that first time that Taylor and Travis went public and Travis opened the door for her and everyone was talking about how chival chivalrous, chivalrous? <laughs> chivalrous he was and... um it was like a whole thing, right? So again, direct reference to that. She also has the line, you know how to ball. I know Aristotle. <laughs> Basically saying, you're good at sports, but I'm the smart one. <laughs> Which honestly, it's facts. Um, okay. Then she says, brand new, full throttle. Touch me while your bros play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Not Travis's friends taking shots. Um, again, that is so high school. Like the friends being off in the other room playing a video game and you're with your boyfriend. Hilarious. You knew what you wanted and boy, you got her. Again, Travis being very like, I want to hang out with you, Taylor Swift, and then making it happen. Then she so sweetly references Travis's dad in an indirect way. She says, I feel like laughing in the middle of practice to that impression you did of your dad again, I'm hearing voices like a madman. So referencing a time, I guess, when Travis was impersonating his father, which is sweet. And, you know, Travis is, both, both of his parents have been super supportive of Taylor and have been like very kind, but Travis's dad in particular has been really sweet whenever he's asked about her and talks about like listening to her music and diving into all of it and like watching her interviews and stuff to like try to figure out who she is. So I would love to know what, Mr. Kelsey thinks of that reference. Anyway, that is so high school. And honestly, I'm still, I'm still like that. I just, I, I love that we at least got a Travis song on this album. I'm happy that we at least got something. Uh, and it kind of gave the album a bit more levity, I feel like in a lot of ways too, because it is a pretty heavy, pretty um, depressing album. Uh, to be totally honest, she also kind of, she makes some football references in the alchemy. It's hard to tell. At least I've only listened to it a couple of times at this point. So my opinions may change next week. And please let me know what you guys think in the comments, but it's hard for me to figure out if the alchemy is about Travis, but she makes football references in the song. So she says, um, so when I touch down, touch down, call the amateurs and cut them from the team, ditch, ditch the clowns, get the crown, baby, I'm the one to beat. Because a sign on your heart said it's reserved for me. Honestly, who are we to fight the alchemy? So there's like a, you know, touch down, cut the amateurs. She also says, um, she also says, where's the trophy? He just comes running over me. Now, obviously she finished this album before the Super Bowl. Like she finished, the, the album was announced before the Super Bowl even happened. So I don't think this is like a direct reference to that necessarily, but obviously like she's been inspired by football. It's safe to say. So I'm going to have to come back to this song and like dissect the lyrics a little bit more because I still am not exactly sure what, who the song's about, but I, I obviously cannot miss the um, Travis Kelsey mentions. Then we have the Kim Kardashian songs. Now, people have talked about how Cassandra is about Kim Kardashian. And I, again, I need to kind of dive into that one a little bit more. But I think it's very clear that Thank You, Amy is about Kim because the lyrics suggest it. But also in the actual title, she has only capitalized in the words, Thank You, Amy. She's only capitalized the K in thank uh, and then the I and the M in Amy. What does that spell? Kim. Um, and in the song, it basically portrays like a bully in school who's like being mean to this person, 
Taylor Swift. She says, all that time you were throwing punches, I was building something and I can't forgive the way you made me feel. Screamed F you Amy to the night sky as the blood was gushing, but I can't forget the way you made me heal. And maybe you've reframed it and in your mind, you never beat my spirit. Uh, I don't think you've changed much. Uh, And then the like kicker, well, there's a couple different parts. One is she says, and so I changed your name and any real defining clues. And one day your kid comes home singing a song that only us two is going to know is about you. Basically saying your kids Northwest is going to be coming home, singing a song that is directly about you and me, and she won't even know it. One, because I do a good job of covering it up, but also because I'm everywhere and everyone's a fan of me and you're never going to be able to avoid me. Shots fired. Then she says, everyone knows my, everyone knows that my mother is a saintly woman, but she used to say she wished you were dead. Andrea Swift. Wow. Um, Again, Shots Fire, I was not expecting a Kim Kardashian song on this album. I was not expecting her to like go in again, but this is clearly something that is still bothering her. It's still affecting her. It's still hard for her to move on. It's still like a major part of, I don't know, kind of like her song songwriting inspiration. It, it was a very pivotal point in her life, that time when you know, she was quote unquote canceled by Kim and everything like that was a dark, dark period for Taylor. So I can understand her being very resentful and still very angry about it. Um, But I do hope and I feel like she has, but I do hope that she's like moving through that and working through that in a really healthy way, because obviously hanging on to that resentment and and anger is not going to be great long term, you know, but that was a that was quite the surprise song to wake up to and hear uh, in the bonus tracks. So That's just the very quick rundown of the Travis song, the Kim song. Again, we have so much to get into. We're going to be doing a reaction video to Fortnite. That will be out this weekend, so please stay tuned for that. And next week, we're going to be just Torture Poets Department, left, right. The whole week is going to be going through this album, breaking it down, all of the things. I'm going to take this weekend to fully digest the album, to process it, to understand the lyrics, the words, to form my opinion. And then we'll come back next week, ready to talk about it more in depth, ready to do some rankings, all that good stuff. Again, if you love Taylor Swift, if you're a Swifty, if you want to listen to me ramble about rankings, hot takes, news, all that stuff, please subscribe to our channel. Please follow us on social media and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.